Hello there, YouTube. Look what I'm doing. I'm trying to light my pipe. Failing miserably at that because the moment I packed it, the wind kicked in. It was a completely spontaneous decision. I was running some chores around the house, went to my grandma's apartment. picked up the package with yet another knife and then I was gonna film some videos a video just sitting around and talking but I thought to myself what the hell it's mission Monday let's have some fun so here I am housekeeping what do you know my Bertram Mirsham probably the smallest pipe I have and because I wanted it to be something special Frog Morton Has anyone started selling a match of this tobacco? I wonder. I wonder how it will affect me. Last time, if you remember, I was smoking a cigar. And I must admit, I was a bit greedy, I smoked it to the knob after I finished filming and I was so nauseous it was like an evening of torment one of the reasons I picked a small pipe so how are you doing people? Anything interesting going on? I've been like, completely missing on the community stuff uh, lately. I don't know why. I'm just like kind of lost interest. Besides, it's pretty depressing to look at people smoking their pipes and enjoying their hobby while you don't smoke yourself. reason for this video is like catching up and sharing two stories with you people because I was recently I recently came back from the, my log cabin my property <laughs> and it's out so I among other things I inherited a small plot of land I did a conversion before going here actually it's like one point something something acre of land with a log house, a bath house, which is a separate thing in Russia, and a big barn and a fence. That's it. Those of you who follow me on Instagram saw pictures of this uh, house and I posted pictures of from my recent tour <laughs> there but like telling a story is always more interesting so th this particular visit last time I visited it was well, not last time, the previous time. It was back in May, and I spent a great deal of my 
of that vacation arguing with my grandmother because yeah that's a story for a separate a rather unpleasant video won't spoil the fun for you so this time I went with my wife and kids my grandma stayed at home thank goodness well she told us basically this is your property the house that we have closer to Moscow Dacha like the smaller house that's mine we'll just separate and take care of each respective place so it was us kids kids in our 30s without any quote-unquote grown-ups The very first day, here's the sun. The very first day we come, we come arrive early in the morning. Open the house, tidy everything up, like hang the bed sheets outside. To dry them get them dry open the windows because usually the windows don't open we have two in the house that we can, you can basically take the window one of the window frames out we replace those window frames with mosquito nets and so because this, this summer was very, very hot and dry. And the locals were complaining that nothing is growing. I say the locals, but there's really one neighbor. A uh, lady, like, I think late 40s maybe she's living out there all alone with two dogs and her daughter visits her like from time to time and very industrious lady uh, she has like vegetables she has like chickens and two pigs and rabbits and ducks <laughs> and she was she's almost living off the land but at the same time she is uh, uh, she has an education she's a veterinarian which is a huge asset like in the countryside She's like a freelance veterinarian. There's someone poking out there. A mouse, maybe. Maybe a mouse. So, so she's like the real deal. <laughs> and we usually run to her for help. Like, how do, how do you do this? How do you perform that? And my grandma did the same so she's the next door house and apart from her there are like three people living like four people living nearby so that's quite a desolate place and there are some houses that are, have been abandoned some of them are falling apart others are more or less intact and um, 
we're having dinner or fixing the TV I don't remember really but I suddenly sensed that someone was something was burning there's a smoke coming through the open window I went to investigate and my kids ran with me we crossed to the street quote-unquote I saw the smoke billowing like from the from behind one of the abandoned houses which is, was more or less intact the fence is long gone so I just went around and I saw basically a wall of fire and smoke that has turned from white to black I also saw one of the residents of that like hamlet a very very elderly gentleman He's like 90, legitly 90, uh, engulfed in flames. Flames all around him, whacking about with a stick or a shovel. I also saw his neighbor, an elderly lady, I don't know, maybe 60, 70 years old. And I saw my next door neighbor the veterinarian lady, lady they're like hitting the fire with shovels trying to put it out and the, the the neighbor lady turned to me and waved a hand and I still wonder what she meant because it was not like the come help me wave or stay back wave it was sort of a uh, wave like I don't I don't know if you should come help us wave something like that I'm basically giving up on this fuck this so I ran back home and the boy my son went after me and the girl I think stayed behind to watch the flame and he was running behind me and because he is a great deal shorter than me and he only saw the smoke <laughs> he's running behind me saying what's what's out there and they were saying there's a fire a couple of seconds passing he's still running behind me and he asks me is that a bad thing <laughs> like running <laughs> crying over the shoulder yeah it's a very bad thing we're going to get the shovel and try to put it out and so I ran home, took a shovel, and my wife, who is a like stone cold lady, with she's very phlegmatic. She says, "Is that a fire?" I said, "Yeah, there's a gr the grass is burning." And she said, "Okay," and <laughs> I ran off. And she followed me. By the time we arrived, the like the the area that was burning was like half a football field, maybe. It was mainly grass, like the dry grass from the year before, underneath the green grass that's been standing, caught fire, and it's all spreading, spreading, spreading. And there's a wood. In the uh, in the path, tall bushes, and the that abandoned house, and the barn. And first, we're trying to to prohibit, to to deny the access to the to the barn and to the building, then to the bushes, and then to the wood behind. And the wind was not helping and we basically took turns me and my wife 
one is coughing behind the other is sticking his upper torso inside the smoke whacking at the at the burning grass then he falls back to cough and have a breathe a breath of fresh air and another one goes in and basically my like the neighboring lady was doing the same all the while I was wondering if my terrible terrible uh, Crocs knockoffs that I was wearing and I bought in, in from the dollar store uh, if they will survive or will I burn my feet <laughs> so that was a lot of fun One moment amidst all this mayhem, like the neighboring lady what, led slash dragged the older neighbor away because he was almost unconscious. And she ran off, called the fire department and to their credit, they arrived in about 20 minutes, well, closer to half an hour. By the time they arrived, we've put out almost everything, so they were pretty pissed. And one thing, <laughs> they arrived in two fire engines, no water. <laughs> like filling the tank in the fire engine costs money and so unless there's a, like a real blaze and houses on fire and people's lives in danger <laughs> turns out they basically come without water Also, if there's no fire to put out, they will, turns out, f fine you for that, if they find someone responsible, and they demand compens uh, compensation for their, like, gasoline, but we managed to talk ourselves out of all of this, because we basically told them what we didn't know that we will that we could cope with the fire so and there was at the time of the call there was a risk of the whole hamlet burning down basically so they said out oh, to hell with you and they left and it later turned out that that older like senior citizen i was talking about he was the cause of the fire Each spring and summer in Russia is the, the forest fire season. Like nine times out of ten, it's the grass. People are burning the grass. Uh, I stand corrected. Like 50-50. 50% 50 /50. burning grass. 50% tourists that don't have any discipline and don't know how to that you're supposed to pour water on the fire when you leave your campsite so that was the case of the first 50 percent grandpa decided to burn some grass the different reasons for people to do that in Russia kids are doing it just out of mischief some 
idiots actually believe that the uh, that the ashes act as fertilizer so doing what the prehistoric man did and some people like my veterinarian neighbor actually do it to protect in order to protect their property because she says her house is near the street slash road and she says I uh, like if I'm away and the car comes by and someone tosses a cigarette cigarette butt out of the window or a match and the grass catches fire and my whole house goes like I'd rather burn the grass in a controlled way To prevent this but this particular grandpa I don't know Sim he m probably he's just old uh, but our like veterinarian neighbor said he has done something like that in the past when he was younger Maybe he's like a sleeper pyromaniac, I don't know. But basically he wanted to burn the grass behind his house. And he miscalculated something, naturally. The wind. He let the fire spread too far, then it caught the wind. And instead of running for help, he tried to put it out himself. And nearly burned himself to death in the end because I saw him like sorry, I saw him like eyebrows singed <laughs> the rem remain whatever hair was remaining at his head singed burned <laughs> not terribly but like red so he was in pretty rough shape and he was very miserable because everyone was giving him shit like throughout the week he basically lives alone and his daughter uh, drives every like Saturday uh, provides food for him well basically takes care of him and like everyone was giving him shit and then she came by she learned about that and she like demolished him i think we haven't seen him like in like two days after the talk she gave him so that was a lot of fun and kids got to see a real fire and us Moscovites got to be heroes for a week because like I, our neighbor told us if you if it didn't come or if you didn't go about putting out the fire I would have left just called the fire department and waited basically if it wasn't for you and I if it wasn't for my wife I would have left as well so that's how, like that's how one person's decision affects the others I even posted the photo on Instagram like uh, my wife is a legit hero like I'm a grown man and I was scared shitless to like I was scared to go in and she went in with a shovel and uh, like the blaze was as high as my shoulder basically 
and she is as high as my shoulders so she was going against the fire that's her height with a shovel and she went about it like calmly and methodically and I have nothing but respect and admiration for her so that's one story another story came about like a week and a half after that because uh, <laughs> one of the main purposes for this trip was to fix the roof on the barn because there are two large holes in that in it so I hired some locals to buy me some materials and I was about to do that myself uh, but before that there was some tall grass and bushes behind the barn where the holes are so to approach the roof and climb it I needed to clear some space My grass trimmer wasn't really cutting it, so I took the largest knife I own and just started to chop the grass. And uh, well, the short of it is this beauty, it's already healed almost. The gray, the gray thing is the, is just a crust of blood. It will eventually fall off so I was holding I was holding the grass like that whack 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 I didn't wa wait as you can see straight into the index finger knuckle and like the nearest hospital is an hour drive away so and the bleeding was not that intense so I asked my ever calm wife to pour some disinfectant on it and to wrap it with a bandage the next day we tore the bandage off it's still bleeding not profusely bleeding and we rebandaged it third day nope still bleeding so I went to my veterinarian neighbor uh, asked her for an opinion she gave me a tube of like m medical or surgical glue and I basically poured it on top of the wound and sealed it like that and naturally my left hand was out of the equation because that, that's that's the place that is constantly flexing when you're doing anything basically and the moment you try to clench your fist that's as far as I can go right now the moment you try to clench it it opens up starts bleeding again and so I didn't fix the roof which is unfortunate and I don't know how I will go about doing it because like I can probably hire some locals to do that but they are unwilling to do that because the roof is pretty much it's like rotten and they are afraid that if they go up there they will just will just collapse so I don't know really it calls for another visit but like autumn is like a couple of days away and kids will go to school and I really need to start looking for a job and so I don't know if I'll be able to go out but on the other hand the neighbors are saying that like it's been standing like that for 10 years one year will make a difference And I want to believe them on the one hand, but on the other hand, that's like...
I'm genuinely disappointed that I didn't fix it. Uh, then I went and I arrived in Moscow. My wife persuaded me to go to the like emergency medical post. We call it, well, something like the trauma station. <laughs> They're open 24-7 and you can, if you have your medical insurance card, they will fix you. Or at least stabilize you. So you can go to the like regular doctor later. Yay for free healthcare in Russia. They gave me shit for using the glue because they said that you're supposed to glue the wound only in very sterile conditions. Usually surgeon does that and I'm like, guys, I was running out of bandages. What did you expect me to do? Like, wrap it in bad sheets? What? I still need to do at least something around the house and I still need to go board the train, carry my like bag, my rucksack with me. And I just... Well, the logical solution would probably would be to go to just the nearest city, which is like a 40 minute drive, go to the to there trauma like post and have them stitch it together but yeah it didn't seem like much but yeah so, so they wrote it off as an infected wound and sent me to uh, like a surgeon in the local clinic that I'm attached to and he looked at it the next day and said are you kidding me uh, it's not infected, everything's fine. Just bandage and rebandage it and it will heal. And I'm very lucky actually because I think the, the muscle that extends my finger that way is intact. Like I cannot do that yet, but I probably will be able to do that eventually. And I don't know how, how exactly why I didn't chop into that, why I didn't separate separate but yeah i'm a lucky guy and i can still fret my guitar which is a nice bonus <laughs> so there you have it it starts whistling so here are two stories from the, like, the depths of the Russian countryside. And I'm, on the one hand, very grateful for my relatives that they bought this house. And on the other hand, I'm so, like, I feel the responsibility and it weighs me down, really. This is the house, this is the land I need to visit regularly. And it's uh, like, that's the, like, a legit expedition, because you're driving there is a chore, so you have to go by train, night on the train, then you have to grab a like a driver, a taxi, 40 minutes from the city, from the train station, in the middle of nowhere. Nearest store is like an hour walking distance. Same with the doctor. Yeah.
but you can uh, like I, I I cannot leave this place that's my place it's my house my grandfather rebuilt it yeah so there's that I'm extremely lucky that my wife likes the place and she likes like, this sort of rural lifestyle and she seems genuinely excited to go there again and the kids are still having fun there mainly because of the neighbor and all the animals there but we'll see I'm tempted to go again in the autumn but who knows what my situation will be in the autumn maybe I'll find a job and finding a job well the standard like procedure in Russia means that you cannot apply for a vacation for six months and in even if you could that's like what will the employer think the guys commences working and then immediately goes on vacation that's like bad practice Anyways, I'm gonna leave you with that. I've been rambling for 30 plus minutes. I'm gonna finish this pipe. Sorry, I'm turning. There's someone <laughs> rustling the leaves out there. I think it's a mouse, probably. I saw another one over there, just opening in the grass. I'm usually pretty good at spotting this stuff and the kids who are supposed to be younger than me are usually very very clueless like look what there's a snake what a snake <laughs> sorry about that I simultaneously ran out of memory <laughs> on the phone and the battery was getting low and so it cut me off I'm gonna finish this video because I've been rambling for 40 minutes I don't know if anyone is really interested in my rambling but thanks for dropping by I really hope I will be able to splice this ending to add it to the previous video with something I don't know and I wish you a happy week hope everyone is doing okay stay happy stay positive and take care of your land Thanks for dropping by. I'll be seeing you people. Bye.